So hi guys and welcome back. For our video today I was curious about how far can I get with a cheap 25mW 5.8 GHz transmitter. 25mW mW is what is legal to use without a special license in most countries and what is also used for official FPV racing events so that should be something interesting. I just wanted to figure it out for myself. There are already many videos on this, but I just wanted to check for myself and that's what we will do in this video. So the, the video transmitter which I have chosen is shown here. So that is from EA Shine. It is the ED25 uh, video transmitter by EA Shine. You can get that very cheaply from Banggood. I will include the link in the in the description. So the transmitter itself it's nice. It comes with the usual manual which you know from these kinds of transmitters. So it's described nicely. The transmitter itself is also nice. So what we can see here is that uh, it comes with a more uh, modern setup. So you don't have to use a, a, a dip switch to change the frequencies. You will just use this small switch uh, here. So there you can just change the frequencies and the bands. And here on the bottom it will show you which band you're on, A, B, E or F, and which channel. So you can see four bands, eight channels. That is a, a 32 channel uh, video transmitter. It's not race band, but yeah, for this test it should be nice enough. And as said, it comes at a, a transmitting strength of 25 milliwatts. You can also see on the right it has a 5 volts output. And so, if you want to have, uh, uh, if you have a, a flight camera, a blood camera which uh, uses 5 volts, you can. Uh, use that with that receiver. You don't need a, a special power supply, a special PSC for that. And it has, of course, the full power out. It goes from 7 to 24 volts, as we know from this uh, uh, transmitters. So that is nice and that is what we will use to see how far can we get with a 25 milliwatt uh, video transmitter. The video transmitter itself is, is quite lightweight, so we will take a, a quick look at that here. So that video transmitter comes in at 7 grams, so it's really small and lightweight uh, uh, and, and probably a good choice for, for smaller builds as well. So how are we going to do this? I will explain this to you now. This is very simple. I've just chosen to, to make myself a very simple test bed, which you can see here. This is again with a really low cost uh, components. Uh, so I got the, the monitor from my from my old uh, uh, Quanum goggles from the VR1 here. Uh, here I will have a smartphone, which I will simply use a GPS distance app on to show me the distance I, I am from the from the video transmitter. I need the battery of course and here I have my receiver. This is also a cheap receiver. That's the 805 receiver it, which you all know. So these are all budget components because this should be uh, well I would say a real world test. So this is my test setup which I will just use to get some distance between me and uh, the video transmitter and here I will see what my uh, video quality is. This is of course not a scientific bench test. So this is a probably also not highly accurate real world test. Uh, I'm saying this is not highly accurate because I'm moving on the ground. So I'm moving on the ground away with my test bed here. So I'm not flying, I'm moving by foot. And of course, uh, on the sender side for the video transmitter, we won't have any interference uh, from ESCs, motors and so on. So the test results must be taken with a grain of salt 
please. This is just the first test which I'm doing to just find out for myself how far can you get with that kind of, of, of video transmitter. In order to do this test, I have chosen to use three different types of antennas. So first I will use these really cheap and small rubber ducky antennas. You should actually never use them. <clears throat> Well, actually they say you should never use them because they are so bad. We will today find out how bad they really are. Then as a second choice, I will use the, the Fetchark Spironet antennas. So these are supposed to be high quality antennas and I expect them to really give me much better results than the rubber ducky antennas. And third, and here it gets interesting, I will use a pair of antennas from bird's eye view. So these are the pulsar antenna, which is the spanner style antenna, which I have here, which we will uh, use on the receiving end, of course. And uh, the, the dome antenna, which is here, just this, it's awesome. Just look how tiny it is, which we will use for the video transmitter. These are really nice antennas. I will also post the, the link to where you can get them in the description. <clears throat> and there are some specifics about these antennas. So for one, and I will just refocus this here. This Pulsar style antenna is not your usual panel antenna. Because usually these uh, panel style antennas have acquired narrow uh, uh, beam width, so you have to quite accurately point them at the video transmitter to get a good signal. But this one actually has a beam width horizontally and vertically of 140 degrees. This is really much. If you look at my mat here, these two lines here are actually 120 degrees because as you can see 180 degrees uh, subtract 30 degrees here, subtract 30 degrees here and here we are at 120 degrees. And this pulsar uh, antenna actually has more than that. It has 140 degrees. So it goes like that probably and like that. So as long as you just look in the general di direction of your craft you will get a good reception. This is the one uh, specific thing which I want to point out about this antenna, which is, is it's really nice. And the other thing is, of course, this little teeny weeny antenna. Look at how small that is. I will bring it into focus here. Just look at how small this antenna is compared to the fetch hack. That this is really, really, really nice because, well, today with our 250 size and sub 250 size quads, the antennas already become the, the, the largest part of the quad. And this is, of course, not good when they crash and so on. So, this is a really, really, really tiny antenna and it's also quite lightweight. So, if we take a look here at the, the weight of this antenna. First, let's take the fat shark, which comes in at about 11 grams. And then we take a look at the, at the, uh, uh, at the dome antenna here, which comes in at 9 grams. So, yeah, there is a bit of stuff in it. It's, it's uh, uh, much smaller than the fat shark and also a bit uh, lighter, a bit more lightweight. But what I really like about this antenna is that it is so small. And of course, you can also bend the antenna. So there is this cable here and this works really, really, really well. Of course, keep in mind, this, what we do here today is not an antenna comparison. At least when it comes uh, to, their, to their range, because these three antennas are very different. 
We have the omnidirectional antennas here, the rubber duckers, which are really cheap. We have the high quality omnidirection antennas from Fetchuck here. And this is of course not an omnidirection, it is a directional antenna. It has a very wide beam width, but it is still directional. So these antennas cannot be directly compared to each other. And there's another factor here, which is unfortunately, unfortunately my fault. So as you can see here, these antennas come with an SMA plug, both of them actually. And my receivers all use the RB SMA plug. So unfortunately I have to use uh, these adapters on both antennas, on both of the bird's eye view antennas, which is quite bad because these adapters introduce quite a bit of loss. So I, I, I fully expect the bird's eye view antennas to perform excellent because they are known to be high quality antennas. But if I would have chosen the right receiver and the right transmitter or the right style of these antennas, I would not have the need to use these adapters which cause a lot of loss. So please keep this in mind as well when you watch the video. Okay, so now let's get into action. Let's, let's finally see your friendly reviewer doing some exercise for you to find out what the range of these antennas is. Okay, so here you can see the setup. You see, uh, just use this chair to, to mount the camera and the video transmitter. And here is our test bench with the mobile phone, with the smartphone on it. And we will first take a look at how this performs with these cheap rubber ducky antennas. So of course, while I'm moving away from the transmitter, my body will block the, the signal a bit. But you will see that I will turn around frequently to see what the, what the true range is. So I will fast forward the, the video now. To the, to the maximum distance which I can go with this rubber ducky antennas. So watch me run. Okay, we arrived now at the maximum distance, uh, which I can go with this rubber duck here antennas, which is 355 meters, as you can see. And we will now continue with the next antenna. Okay, so we will repeat this now with the Fat Shark Spironet antennas. As you can see, this time I'm, hand I'm holding my, my smartphone in my hands. Uh, this is because I found out that uh, the monitor uh, the LCD monitor actually gives me a bit of interference uh, which uh, made the GPS position update less frequently. So it works better this way. Okay, so again, watch me run. Okay, so as you can see, the, the fat sharks brought us to 500 meters distance before the, the video picture really started to, to break up. That's a full 150 meters more than the rubber duck antennas. Really nice. Okay, so now this is our, our final test with the bird's eye view antennas. Same thing as before, watch me run. So one thing which can nicely be seen here is that you have to point in the general direction of the video transmitter to have an image. This is since this uh, panel antenna is a 
directional antenna and not an omnidirectional antenna. So as you can see we arrived here at the distance where we had to finish our tests with the fat sharks and we still have a quite good uh, picture so very flyable. I'm also doing a bit uh, a few tests of the beam width if you can see and yeah it's true so even if I if I move away a lot uh, uh, from the from the direct uh, point of the signal I still have an image. So as you can see here we arrived at the final distance for the uh, bird's eye view antennas which is over 600 meters. So almost twice as much as the rubber ducky antennas and they got a deal more than the fat shark spiral nets and that is including using two of these RPM, uh, RPM SMR adapters which I had to use as explained earlier which caused a lot of loss. So I'm kind of impressed by these antennas and I will of course do further testing. So thank you very much for um, watching. If you like this video please leave a thumbs up, leave, please leave your comments below and see you next time.